What is up everybody and welcome back to episode 12 of our Team Sky Career Mode where today we will be starting off with one man and one man only Santiago Butrago in the Colombian National Championships and we will also be racing the Omluthet Newsblout, Strata Bianchi and we will show a few stages of one of our objectives uh, the Terreno Adriatico but before we get to the racing there has been an update. Max Vandermeilen has gained another half star. He's up to 75 in the hills, 77 stamina, 72 in the mountains, and he looks like he is going to be an incredible rider, maybe as early as late this year, but definitely at the start of next year. But that will take us to the start of our first race. As you can see, our lone rider, Santiago Butrago, in the Colombian National Championships. It's a 232 kilometer hill stage. So unless we get into the breakaway, I don't think we're gonna have a great shot with his race day condition being minus one, but if we can get into an early break, I mean, all bets are off. And as you can see straight away, we are into the breakaway and it doesn't look like there's anybody super threatening here. All we have to do is drop Alvaro Hodge before the last little climb because I think he can keep up with us over that so we're gonna have to go from a little ways out but right now if we can get away and stay away I think we are the clear favorite to become the Colombian national champion and we are here with 16k left I know it's a bit confusing it looks like there's riders in front they are actually a lap down but we are gonna hit this last hill with a little bit of pace the peloton had almost no interest in trying to close this down today so once we get to this pretty big hill here around the corner we're gonna crank up our effort and try to create some space as nobody else that's here with us is very good in the hills so we're gonna go ahead and crank that up to 89 use some of those medium mountain stats that Butrago is so good at and once we get to the top crank it up to 92 and see if anybody can follow us Right now, Hodge looks like he can, so we're going to turn it back down a little bit for this descent and hopefully get some of our red bar back. We'll set it to 85, and just down this hill and around the corner is going to be a nice little launch pad for us to put in a dig and see if we can get that distance we want. And right now, looks like there is a rider close on us but we are still gapping him a tiny bit and now we're gonna set to 82 and recover on this downhill right now there's a group of three Hodge is in that group so we're gonna have to try and lose him over this last climb which I have serious concerns about and with us slowing our pace that's gonna give Hodge a chance to recover as well we really need to attack this from the base of the climb the other five riders now about 10 seconds behind but as soon as we hit this slope we're going to attack and right oh it's actually gonna be a sprint as we sprint over the top we do have a slight gap but it is from a long way out 2k Hodge actually going now it looks like he is going to be the Colombian national champion unless we get him on this last corner and I don't think that's gonna be the case Alvaro Hodge just too impressive was able to stick with us on that last hill and Reyes actually coming in second place so we're gonna come across in third place with Santiago Butrago I know he wasn't in the greatest shape but that is a huge disappointment for us but we will have to get over that disappointment pretty quick because it's already time for the Omlupet Newsblout, a 200.6 kilometer flat cobbled stage. And as we know, our team is not the best on the cobbles, but I think we have enough riders to make a difference, especially if we can get Ethan Vernon there to the line. If we take a look at the favorites, we're definitely not on them. So we're going to be fighting an uphill battle, but with the strength of our team I think we can get over those last cobbled hills and try to at least bring it home on that downhill finish and we are here with just under 27k left in the race 
hitting a flat section right before those last two hills. The leading group is still a minute ahead, but nobody too threatening in there. Tom Scoinch could probably make something happen, as could Tim Wellens. But we have been steadily pulling them back, and I have no doubt we'll catch them before the climb. As the atta attacks start to go up the road, Nils Pollitt making a move, followed by Wout Van Aert and Mathieu Van Der Poel. We're not going to attack just yet, but we're going to try and stick with them, and then right now we can set our effort up to 87. Wout Van Aert just seeming like he can attack forever as Victor Campenarts and Julian Alaphilippe try to follow. Vic Wout Van Aert still attacking, just incredible from him. Amari Capio, Jasper de Boist also trying to make a move as now we are in the hills. We can start to unleash our guys a little bit. Oyer Lascano going to get ready to take this up after Ide Skelling's done. And Ide Skelling is not going to have long left here as everybody trying to chase down Mathieu van der Poel now as Ide Skelling's day is done. Lascano leading the boys over the second to last hill. Fred Wright has punctured. Oh no. It's going to be Oyer Lascano, Connor Swift, and Ethan Vernon to the finish line, but I do not see Connor Swift or Ethan Vernon. Vernon getting lost back there. So Connor Swift is going to be our best shot here. We're going to have to manage his stamina accordingly as we can go up to 94, 95 up this last hill. I think Connor Swift is going to make it. We're in a group with the main riders here. Oyer Lascano, is he just going to make it up the hill on this group he will and we will actually set our pace to 75 we're not going to attack this is Vanderpool decides now's the time to go followed by Stefan Kuhn Wout Van Aert Florian Seneschal also trying to pull him back Connor Swift it looks like he's gonna have to do this one alone if he's gonna be able to do it Oyer Lascano is just about done we're gonna get Connor Swift queued up nicely here as Lascano's yellow bar just about done. And Connor Swift on his own. We're going to set his pace to 75. Use the energy gel. And we don't want to lead these guys out, but I don't see any other option. We can't let the pace drop again. We're going to go up to 80 as Matthew Vanderpool on our wheel, always a terrifying sight. As our energy gel pops just a little bit sooner than we'd like. Still on 80 with Connor Swift. We're going to bump it up to 89 and start our sprint around this last corner. But does Connor Swift have enough in his locker for Vanderpool and Van Art? It looks like we're just going to be beaten on the line by Wout Van Art. And Mathieu van der Poel, but a great showing there from Connor Swift. Unfortunate that Fred Wright fell when he did. But Connor Swift mopping up pretty nicely there, getting us a podium at the Omlupet News Club. And that result will fill us with confidence coming into Strada Bianchi. A 176-kilometer hilly cobble stage, and we have brought our big hitters as this isn't too tough with the cobbles. We've brought Santiago Butrago, Leo Hader, Oscar Only, Max Poole, the guys that are good in the hills but not very good on the cobbles, as I think they can at least do a job here for Fred Wright and Mark Hirschi, who are going to be our two leaders for the day. We don't want to limit ourselves to one option, but I think if we had a decent shot at the Om Loop, then Strada Bianca can definitely be within our grasp. And we are here with about 40k left to go, and there are some dangerous riders up the road already. So we see Adam Yates, Tade Pogatre, Julian Alaphilippe, and Mathieu Vanderpool just behind this front group of three. So we are going to work to pull them back. Primoz Roglic up here with us, and it has been an incredible pace so far. It has been such a difficult race. And now Antonio Tiberi doing a great job uh, getting water for everybody. 
we're going to have to manage this gap to the riders in front of us who have about a minute. And it doesn't look like... No, we're not going to go 90 quite yet. There we go. We'll go 87. Max Poole can follow T-Berry. We're just going to burn T-Berry out over these hills because he's not going to be worth much once we get to the cobbles and we're slowly eating into that gap. Right now it's just Adam Yates, Vanderpool, Pogacar, and Alaphilippe. We're just trying to pull back. It's nothing too difficult. Um, but we're going to try and do that before we get to that last little hill section. And we are here with just under 17k left to go. We have caught Alaphilippe and Pogacar, but Matthew Vanderpool still up the road as well as that early break of not quite as talented riders, but we are consistently pulling them back. So it's going to be up to us to catch Mathieu van der Poel. I don't think Daniel Oss is going to have enough to take this from us, but as you can see, our stamina is already in a dangerous position, especially with, with Mark Hirschi and Fred Wright, our two best riders suited to win this race, as we are about to latch on to van der Poel, it looks like. We're actually going to slow the pace down a little bit because we are not too concerned, like we said, about pulling that early break back, but Leo Hader is going to be the one to pace us to the end. We're going to set him down to 80. Looks like Vanderpool is already off the back, and we are catching that front group. So we might be in a perfect position here to get our two riders to the end in the lead, because there are only nine kilometers left. A minute still separates us from the break. Leo Hader having a good day. Mark Hirschi not so much, but it's all going to be about Fred Wright. And if we can close the gap to Zamanini and Freila, which I think we should be able to do, but that gap is just persisting and persisting, so we're going to have to crank our energy usage up to 85 and see if that will be able to do the trick. It doesn't look like it's falling that fast, but... Actually, now that I say that, it is coming down rather quickly. As with 4.5k, we're going to go ahead and pop the energy gel on everybody. It's going to be Mark Hirschi leading out Fred Wright. All we have to do is catch Zambanini and Fryla, and we will be in business here. As the only other rider in our group is Max Poole. So as long as we catch this group, we have to be considered favorites, and we are going to turn up the pressure straight from the bottom of the hill. Max Poole, get out of the way. <laughs> As we're going to sprint with Leo Hader, sprint with Mark Hirschi, and sprint with Fred Wright. We're going to see if we can come around Zambanini here. As it looks like Fred Wright is going to be our best option. He has a tiny bit of his red bar left, but is it going to be enough? It's not. Eduardo Zambanini is going to win Strada Bianchi. Followed by Fred Wright, Mark Hirschi, and Omar Freyla, and Leo Hader also getting a top five. And there we can see Eduardo Zambanini on the top step of the podium, but four riders in the top six of the general classification is not a bad way to finish Strada Bianchi as we take a look at the team classification, and it is Team Sky by 11 minutes. So we have been super unlucky in these first two races of this episode, but I think that form's going to bode well going in it into Terreno Adriatico. And after the team time trial in stage one, we are 42 seconds behind Team Jumbo Visma, but we will start our Terreno Adriatico campaign on stage two, a 190 and a half kilometer hill stage, and with the team we brought, I have to assume we're going to be a dominant force here. So we take a look at the favorites. Nah, absolutely not. Uh, we do not have a single favorite, but I think the uh, overall strength of our team is going to lend itself really well to this stage, and we're definitely going to look to try and win this one. And we are here with 11k left to go. Josh Tarling pulling back the early break right before the last climb, which is exactly what we wanted and Oscar Onley is going to take over Josh Tarling. Great job. Love that guy. He's going to be an incredible rider in the future. But for now, we have 
8K to go until the finish. Oscar Onley is on the front. We're looking to set up Ben Healy or Antonio Tiberi. They are our riders in the best shape. But this incline is going to be pretty steep. So I don't know if Ben Healy is going to make it up here until it flattens out. That's where he's really going to come into his own. But Oscar Onley going to hit the gas. Ben Healy going to get ready to do that as well as he's we're gonna set him to 92 whenever he takes over and we're not going to hit the energy gels just yet we're gonna wait until about 4k left to go to do that for everybody Oscar Onley can go Ben Healy Antonio Tiberi Elon Van Wilder and Fred Wright is now Ben Healy gonna be the next to take his turn on the front now that Oscar Onley's done and no we do not want him to pace at 70 we, we want him up at 92 Oscar Onley falling back through the pack but right now we are in a great position Ben Healy gonna start his sprint and Antonio Tiberi gonna start his as well oh no the shuffle getting us lost a little bit but it looks like Antonio Tiberi is gonna hold everybody off to take the stage win on stage two at the Torino Adriatico. Elon Von Wilder actually coming around to finish second as well, so a great result for the Team Sky Boys. And there we see Antonio Tiberi taking his first win of the season. Elon Von Wilder in second. Fred Wright sitting there in fifth place, so we are set up pretty well to challenge for this GC. But if we click over to the general classification, we can see just how far behind Jumbo Visma we are. Antonio Tiberi is our best place rider currently in ninth position. Elon Von Wilder in 10th. But I believe our objective is a top five, so this just isn't going to do. And we are going to move right along to stage four, Foligno to Fasombrone, a 212 kilometer hilly stage. And that little downhill at the end looks perfect. For our downhill ace, Ilan Von Wilder, currently sitting in 11th place. Uh, Kevin Jenyets did, unfortunately, win stage 3 by a minute, so he is in the lead. So that takes a little bit of the pressure off of Jumbo Visma. But I think if we can get Ilan Von Wilder over the top of that hill in first place, he can definitely rise up the rankings. And we are here with 17k left. We are about to start the cappuccini climb for the first time josh tarling is going to lead our boys out we are 1.5 k away from the top and we're going to see just how brutal this climb is right now antonio tiberi and Ilan van wilder unfortunately not in the best shape and i think 89 is going to be a bit too hard but that front group still a minute 40 ahead and we cannot let them get to the top of that second cappuccini climb so Josh Tarling gonna be giving it his all right now we're gonna get Antonio Tiberi ready as well as Rigoberto Uran looks to try and make a move and come around but Josh Tarling gonna try and keep up with him on the downhill I don't know if that's gonna be possible Josh Tarling's downhill only 87 but right now, Ben Healy looks like he's in great position to make a move up this last climb if, and that's a big if, we can get to the leaders. But Josh Tarling recovering a ton of stamina. We're going to go ahead and set his pace even higher. We're going to get Antonio Tiberi ready as well as Josh Tarling. Hopefully he just doesn't ride straight away from Antonio Tiberi on this tiny little flat section. It's, T-Berry does manage to grab his wheel. We did use a little bit too much energy for my liking getting there. But we are still a minute behind that front group. And we're going to have to launch Antonio T-Berry as soon as we get to the bottom of this hill. We're going to use the energy gels on all of our riders. And T-Berry looks like he's not... Well, maybe he might be able to close him down. We don't want to attack just yet. We desperately don't want to attack as moves do start to go up the road. But Ben Healy going to take his turn on the front. And we are actually going to try and attack over the top with him. See if anybody can follow, which right now they can't. Fred Wright needs to calm down and let Ben Healy get some distance on the rest of the group. We have a group of four in front. 
Ben Healy getting some red bar back as we go down this hill. And T. Barry right there with him. Oscar Onley right there with him. It looks like we might be cruising to a second stage victory as we only have 2K left. I think we can go ahead and start our sprint with Ben Healy and we can feel pretty good about that. Oscar Onley, Ide Skelling, Elon Von Wilder can also start his sprint. It's going to be a sweep of the top five, the top six for Team Sky, and it's going to be Ben Healy coming across the line in first place unless Fred Wright comes around. But no, it is going to be Ben Healy, Fred Wright, Oscar Onley, Antonio T. Berry, and Elon Von Wilder coming in sixth place. Pidcock does sneak out that fifth position, but with Ide Skelling finishing in the top ten as well, this is utter domination by our team. And Ben Healy also gets his first stage win of the season. And a clean sweep of the podium. It's nine seconds back to the rest of the group, which isn't as big of a gap as we would have liked. And if we take a look at the general classification, that does leave us in 8th, ninth, and 10th position with Ben Healy, Fred Wright, and Antonio Tiberi. With one time trial and one more hill stage coming up, I think our chances of a top five are looking pretty rocky right now. And we get the final hill stage out of the way first. Looks like it's going to be a pretty brutal day. From Coli Almatauro to Recanati. A 170 kilometer hill stage. But these slopes look more like mountains to me. So we might be in a little bit of trouble here. But if we can get Elan Van Wilder into a great spot, his fitness is just not looking great. So we might have to fall back to Antonio T. Barry or see if Ben Healy can keep up because we desperately need a top five. And we are here with 25k left. We are coming up to the second to last ascent of the Recanati. This climb is absolutely brutal and we have been struggling to keep up with the top guys. But... Josh Tarling doing a good job trying to lead the boys through it. it looks like Elon Von Wilder not going to have a great day, so we're going to rely on Ben Healy, Oscar Onley, and Antonio T. Berry to try and get us into the top five as we are pushing the pace right now. Tade just can't get away from us, so we're going to set Josh Tarling back down to 85 on this little flat section because we don't want to burn our guys out. And... We're going to keep pushing the pace. We do have a split from the peloton now, so we're going to look to keep that going up these final two climbs. And here with 10k to go, Tade has made a move over the top. We're trying to pull him back with Josh Charling, but he's going to burn himself out if he keeps that up, which I don't know if we really necessarily mind, but we need some energy on Oscar Onley and Ben Healy for this finish as Josh Tarling just runs out of stamina. So it's going to be Oscar Onley to lead us into this final climb of the Reconati. With only 6K to go in the stage. Ben Healy looking like he's going to be in a good spot. But can we catch Tade? I guess it's not as important to win. We just need to uh, get inside the top five as Oscar Onley is going to kick it up to 95 and I'm going to use the energy gel a bit too late well maybe not with 3k left Josh Tarling did a good job of baiting out some attacks there and we're not going to go just yet we're not going to follow Shikone we're not going to follow Jonas but Ben Healy needs to get ready to go 95 up this final climb maybe pull it back a little bit to 87 and he is leading Antonio Tiberi out very well. Tade still just in front as Oscar Onley can do his own thing. Ben Healy going to start his sprint. And Antonio Tiberi also going to launch what he can do. And it's going to be Leonard Van Aetveld to win the stage. But we do have a little bit of gap to the guys behind us. And hopefully... <laughs> It's enough to get us into the top five as Ben Healy and Antonio Tiberi come across the line in 8th and ninth, and Elon Von Wilder 
actually sticking with him, managing to finish 11th. And in the GC, we do manage to move into the top five with Ben Healy, 18 seconds behind Kevin Jenyets, Antonio Tiberi, and Fred Wright, and Elon Von Wilder making up 6th, 7th, and 8th positions as well. So that puts us in a very strong position to at least have one of our riders finish in the top five. And that brings us to the final stage of the Terreno Adriatico. A rare individual time trial for me personally. Uh, it's San Benedetto del Tronto to San Benedetto, Benedetto del Tronto. A 10.2 kilometer time trial. And we're going to have a bunch of guys bunched up towards the end. So we're going to try to do the first part of Ilan von Wilder's time trial and see what we can do with Ben Healy there to secure our top five finish and secure our number one sponsor objective. Yeah, I believe this is the five star objective. So very serious stuff here today. And we are here waiting for Ben Healy to start his time trial. Josh Tarling currently in third place. Unfortunately, Elon Von Wilder started just a bit too close to Ben Healy for us to do both. But we are going to sit back and try and nurse Ben Healy into a top five position in this race. We're actually going to turn the speed up a little bit and see what we can do. He's on a pretty decent day. He does have a bonus to his prologue, which this will take from that stat most likely. He's in 27th position right now, only 18 seconds back. Stamina in a decent spot. We're going to turn it down so we can kind of kick at the line. Now we can bump it up to 87 and turn it all the way up to 99 as he comes across the line in 25th place. 34 seconds behind Magnus Sheffield. And we'll see how that affects the end of this race. Right now, it looks like he finished ahead of three riders in front of him, so we have a decent shot. Wout Van Aert takes the stage in front of Stefan Kug, Magnus Sheffield, and Josh Tarling. If we take a look at GC, it will be Antonio Tiberi in fifth place, actually. Ben Healy in sixth, Fred Wright in eighth, and Elon Von Wilder in tenth. So four riders in the top ten, not a bad return as Wout Van Aert wins Terreno Adriatico on the final day. And that will bring to an end in what is, in my opinion, one of the best episodes of this Team Sky career mode. Definitely one of the most exciting as we do manage to scrape a top five at Terreno Adriatico. And while we were simulating, Max Poole actually finished third at Perry Nice at the same time. So a very successful episode. So if you did enjoy the content please feel free to leave a like or subscribe I put out one episode of the Team Sky career mode every weekend and one episode of our pro cyclist mode during the week two when time allows but I've been working a ton so unfortunately it just hasn't been possible recently but I have a feeling we might be able to sneak two in pretty soon so for now I wanted to say thank you and I will See you later.